Welcome to Women in the Business of Sports. This is a series that Steph and I, the Chief Brand Officer of WWE, and me, the CEO of the Female Quotient, we decided to do together um, because it is just so important to share the spotlight, shine the light on women in the business of sport, on the ice, off the ice, on the court, <laughs> off the court. Um, and it's, it's really so important because sports has been such an arena for social change and to share, so sharing our stories, where you are, where you're going, how you are leading the way, you are role models in so many ways, inspiring us to be better, inspiring us to create more equity in sports. We are so thrilled to have you here and thank you for joining us. Steph, to you to introduce yes. our incredible conversationalists and, and sports activists. Yeah, absolutely. And, and something actually very similar to um, WWE when we announced this panel, you have no idea how many people reached out to me like, well, you have no idea how big of a hockey fan I am, you know, and, and women's hockey in particular. Um, so it's, it's actually, it, it's uh, very exciting. I know we have a lot of people who are tuning in and interested. So let's get right into it. I'm going to introduce everyone. Um, Hillary Knight, is, I'm going to start with you, Hillary, is an American ice hockey forward with the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to advocating for the promotion of professional women's ice hockey. I'm going to let you guys explain a little bit more of exactly what it is in a moment. Hillary is a seven-time world championship gold medal winner, a two-time Olympic silver medalist, and a one-time Olympic gold medalist with Team USA. Thank you for representing USA. Um, she was a critical voice in the U.S. women's national team's fight for equal pay in 2017 and was among a group of 200 who in 2019 announced they would not be playing for any professional league until better pay and working conditions were secured. And she continues to act, advocate for equitable pay in sports. Knight was previously named to the 2018 Forbes 30 under 30 list in sports and was featured in ESPN's 2014 body issue. And the city, this is really interesting. I haven't said this one yet on anyone's bio. The city of Sun Valley, Idaho, where she grew up, pardon me, where she <laughs> grew up, I just lost my voice, officially named May 19th, 2011 as Hillary Knight Day, which is a pretty phenomenal accomplishment. Um, then we have Jaina Hefford, who is the operations consultant for the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. It's like a mouthful to say that and a former professional women's ice hockey player who won seven world championships and four Olympic gold medals for Team Canada. She is a member of the Canadian Olympic Hall of Fame and the Hockey Hall of Fame. With her five Olympic medals, Hefford is one of Canada's most decorated Olympians and one of the longest serving members of Canada's national women's team. In 2007, she started playing with the newly formed Canadian Women's Hockey League and was the first player in the league to, re to, to score 100 career points, which was a record. She retired in 2015 as the CWHL's all-time leader in goals and points and was named to the all-time CWHL team fr from the league's first decade. In 2016, the CWHL introduced, again, here we go, the Jaina Hefford Trophy in her honor, awarded to the most outstanding player in the regular season as judged by the players in the league, mm -hmm. which is pretty powerful. Hefford was then appointed to the commissioner of the CWHL heading into the 2018-2019 season. And after the CWHL closed down in 2019, I'm going to use the acronym now, the PWHPA was formed and Hefford took on the role of operations consultant, handling the day-to-day -day operations of the association, as well as helping increase revenue, sponsorships, and opportunities for the future of women's hockey. And we look forward to hearing all about how you're gonna do that. And of course, Mary Kay Messier, VP of Global Marketing for Bauer Hockey and Senior Advisor to the PWHPA. Um, she is the Vice President of Global Marketing at Bauer Hockey, as I just mentioned, 
In her role, she oversees creative, digital, social, paid media, consumer experience, sports marketing, and strategic partnerships, including international federations, the NHL and the NHLPA. In her current role with the PWHPA, <laughs> Messier focuses on business development and facil facilitating stakeholder relationships. She is a passionate advocate for the game with the goal of making it more accessible, inclusive, diverse, and most importantly, I think, focused on fun. Um, she is the most passionate about growing female hockey and advancing equity for the best women players in the world through the establishment of a sustainable professional league. She helped launch the global campaign, hashtag women's movement never stops, amen promoting the world's top women hockey players and how hockey helps young girls build confidence. Bauer Hockey backed the 2019 women's boycott, demanding better pay and working conditions for women's hockey. Um, and in early February, Messier was named to the 25 most powerful women in hockey list. She is an advisor for the advocacy group Play Like a Girl, a charitable organization leveraging sport to prepare and equip young women with the leadership skills and competitive spirit essential for success, both on the playing field and in the workplace. So we, we are clearly have an esteemed panel here today. <laughs> um, and I guess I would, I would like to start with the first question, Shelly, if you're okay. And that really is for, for whichever one of you wants to take it, you know, what is the PWHPA? Why was it established? What led to the establishment of this organization? And what do you want fans, viewers, executives, et cetera, to know about it? Hillary, you want me to take that one? Sure. <laughs> I'll start it off and then I think Hillary could jump in because uh, obviously she's a pivotal piece of this as a player. Um, so the PWHPA is a players association. Um, and in my bio, you talked about the history of women's and I'll say, quote unquote, professional hockey. I played in three different versions of these leagues over the course of my career. And to be quite honest, there hasn't been a lot of progress. Uh, I played for 17 years. Um, when I started in those leagues, we were playing two nights a week in community rinks and we would play on weekends. Um, no salaries, very little infrastructure and resources. And 17 years later, there was not a whole lot of difference. Um, there were salaries that might have got up to a couple thousand dollars, um, meaning two or three thousand dollars. But we were still playing in community ranks two nights a week at 10 p.m. at night because that's the only time we could get ice um, and really trying to pull it all together. So when the CWHL folded, um, I think, you know, as difficult as that was for many of us involved, including the players, I think it really opened the door for new conversations around how women's sport and women's hockey needed to be supported. So when that happened, the players, including Hillary and 100 and I think almost 200 when we started this, players came together globally. Uh, the first time you probably saw Canadians and Americans in the same room talking together mm -hmm. collaboratively and um, really made a powerful statement that they didn't want to play in any league until it was really provided the infrastructure, the resources they needed to be elite athletes. And it's so much more than salaries. Uh, it's about being put in a position to succeed, to perform at your best, to have those resources you need to be elite level athletes. These women are the best in the world at what they do, and they've never been provided um, an environment to excel in that. So they courageously stepped up and said, you know what, we're going to start this movement to really put a spotlight on the way we, we support women's hockey specifically, but also women's sport. And that's when the PWHPA was formed. So it's uh, it's a strong united group of women that believe there's more out there for women's hockey players. They believe the time is now to create change. And I think we would probably all agree that when real change happens, you have to go through some pretty difficult times to get there. And this group has been resilient. They've been tough. They've been united. And we feel like we're making progress and we're not there yet. But uh, it's a committed group that I'm, a pr I'm proud to be a part of. And Jane, I just want to jump on that because you said something so incredibly important, which was collaboration, that you decided to come together for the first time and unite 
for change. And I think that that's really one of the greatest powers that women possess is, you know, coming together to make a difference. And, you know, we talk a lot about power of the pack, a woman alone has power collectively, we have impact. And so just before Mary Kay was going to jump in, I wanted to, to really highlight that word collaboration that you intentionally chose to do to create the changes that you want to see. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't going to join in there. I think Jaina did a pretty amazing job of, of uh, defining, you know, what the mission is and just why uh, it's so important for all the players and, and why it's important for us as a hockey community, because certainly um, the future of hockey really depends on, on us being able to, as leaders, make our game more diverse and more inclusive. Uh, it's it's not optional. It's it's really a requirement. We, you know, just if you look at the demographics and the shift and the shift in people's values in Gen Z and millennials, um, they believe in equality, um, inclusivity, and diversity, and that's what these women stand for. That's what they represent, and they also are world class athletes. So, I think you know, uh, again, going back to this, this serves girls and women's for sure. But it, it's it's mandatory. It's critical for our sport overall to ensure the future. Well, I also think you know one of the things we talk a lot about because you put fun in the equation. You know, women play for love of the game. Men in general for money. You keep playing because you love the game. And so I want to go um, to Hillary because right before uh, Steph came on, we were talking about you know the last couple of weekends. Can you tell everyone about the Secret Dream Gap Tour and the wow of playing in in Madison Square Garden and you know what that felt like and what it's all about? Absolutely. Well, you know, it's been a drought for having um, any organized games, right, and programming. And that was the, the whole start of the PWHP. I know the acronym's difficult, right? It's even a mouthful <laughs> for me to say. But, you know, what we, we came together for was to increase and combat the visibility component that every women's sport faces, particularly for us, ice hockey, and then provide programming and adequate training resources. So, we have a handful of regions that are training full time right now and to finally have games and programming on the schedule and to kick off the Secret Dream Gap Tour at Madison Square Garden, iconic venue, um, historic night. And Billie Jean King gave us this, you know, look up at the ceiling, you're going to bust through the ceiling and we're going to support all you guys. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, so <laughs> lots of emotions just flowing, but um, to finally have a game to bring the fun back into it. Um, a lot of us players are, as Jaina said, extremely resilient. Um, this is a player led, player driven movement. And so we wear a lot of hats, but to finally lace up the skates, get out there and do what we love to do was an incredible feeling. And then to cap it off, we had another weekend following that at the United Center in Chicago, um, touting an all-female broadcast, national broadcasting crew. Um, so it's just many great things are coming and I'm excited for the momentum that we're creating in the space. Um, it's always scary when you start something new, but as you mentioned, when you have the power of the pack and having these amazing players come together the way that we did to build a better future in the sport is just incredible. So. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for where the sport's going to go, especially with, you know, Mary Kay here and uh, Jaina um, guiding us and leading us along the way. You know, it's, it's interesting. You talk about the excitement of starting something new, but you also took a stand in a pivotal moment. Um, and that must have been um, terrifying. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I say, terrifying is the, the better word. Can, can you explain, you know, what, what went through your mind? What did you feel? Why did you think this was the right thing to do? And how did you get the courage to actually do it? Yeah. And I say terrifying in a good way, I guess. Right. So there's, there's these like the horror and then the excitement of it. And whenever you're putting yourself out there, it's, it's terrifying. It's a terrifying experience, right? And it's a growth opportunity. Um, and I think a lot of us, whether it was the folding of the CWHL, our experience in a former league that didn't really provide uh, adequate environment and our mistreatment there, um, or maybe our experience from the 2017 equitable support boycott that the US uh, national team went through. And I know our Canadian counterparts witnessed us um, drive through that. It just gave us the confidence and the self-awareness and the empowerment to say, look, like if we don't change it, 
who's going to change it, right? And also to have Jane's experience and saying, you know, I've played 17 years and we haven't made much movement. It's like, if not now, then when, right? Mm -hmm. So um, whether you want to call it the stars aligning, the climate in the world changing, I mean, there's all sorts of other factors, but I think there's a, a strong push to get the sport a sustainable future and provide an adequate platform that we've never had, frankly. You know, it's interesting because, you know, I, I spoke with Billie Jean King recently and, you know, you brought her up and what she said was she knew at the age of 12 that she needed to be the champion for equality. She didn't know she was going to be the champion in the world, but she knew she needed to be the champion for equality. And she said it came from within. And so when Battle of Sexes, which was in 1973 with Bobby Riggs, she said she had to win. She had to win. There was no option because she had to do it for women all over the world. And, you know, that was the power from within to come out. So I just, you know, for Mary Kay and for Jaina, like when we talk about the power from within, which both of you, you know, all of you have, what, you know, is the impetus? You've been playing 17 years. You've created the women movement. Women's movement never stops. Um, what is your wish? What is your hope? What is your legacy and how are you going to create these, these actions for change? Because one of the things that you are doing is inspiring young girls around the globe, uh, which is so incredibly clear, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. from my perspective, yeah, you, um, you know, I have young daughters now and, and that's made this personal. Um, you know, I grew up in an environment where I was the only girl that played the game and I was maybe taking the less common path and fortunately had a family that encouraged that less common path for me. Um, but not everyone has that situation, A. And B, I see my kids that are still pretty young, but they are sponges for what they see, what they realize is possible, how quickly they learn that something isn't normal. Um, you know, I, I've had my daughter talk about, you know, in te kids' television shows, why the girls aren't the heroes. Um, and they notice these things at young ages. And in just recently, I've been able, you know, seeing the WNBA and the success of the WNBA on television. And my son all of a sudden is like, oh, you know, let's go watch the women's basketball. And so it's not just about my daughters. It's about my son, too. And I want them to grow up in a world where gender is, is not part of the equation. Um, you know, it's about who you are, what you do, what you're good at, but it's not limited by gender. So, um, you know, I think ultimately we feel like, and I think I can speak for all the players. We just, we want to leave our sport better. We've all had rocky roads through the sport that we love so much and we'll fight for anything for this sport. But when we leave it, we want it to be better than where we found it. You know, Steph and I are very involved in See Her, which is if you can see her, you can be her. And what you just talked about, Jane, is a perfect reflection mm -hmm. of See Her and how we need role models like you, all of you, in, you know, the representation, because representation is reflection, but also from media highlight reels, less than 4% of highlight reels feature women in sports. And so the more we can be flipping the script, we will flip the balance by, you know, perception becomes reality. So thank you for that. Mary Kay, what about you? Yeah, I was going to say, well, my daughter, I have a daughter too. I have three sons and my daughter's actually on here. I saw a little thing come up there. Uh, <laughs> it says so go that, mom. Let's that, just call yeah. it. It's go so, mom. So that's a pretty cool moment uh, for me. But I think, um, you know, I'm not a world-class athlete like these two incredible women. But what I was is I've grown up in hockey my whole life. I really believe in the game and, and what it can deliver and I want those same opportunities for girls and boys I want them to have the opportunity to build confidence self-esteem to uh, learn how to be a good teammate um, and to just have an identity that's strong and powerful and when I got to know these women um, I was just blown away by by how good they are by their sacrifice uh, that they're willing to stand up and do what they're doing which is less of an impact on them and more for the next generation to Jane's point, wanting to leave our sport in a better place. And I just felt like, you know, I have an amazing team at Bauer and, and we're so passionate and we wanted to get involved because one, they deserve it. 
uh, it's the right thing to do. And, and two, for what it will mean for future generations. We, we need more girls and playing hockey and we need more women across our entire sport uh, because of the contributions they'll make and the impact they'll have on the game. And, and I'd like to, to jump in. Actually, one of the things, Jaina, that you had said about your son supporting the WNBA, we've seen that as well in WWE with our the rise of our female stars and giving them more of a spotlight that the boys are suddenly wearing the girls' merch and, and rooting for them just as much. And then Jamie Nestrick made a comment, you know, it's not just about raising strong women, it's about raising men who deserve and support them. And I think that that's just a really important point. And then it brings me um, to you as well, Mary Kay, because your, your brother, I've had very limited exposure um, to hockey. It's only recently actually that I've gotten to know so many of the people who are playing and behind the scenes. Um, but I did of course hear of the Messiah, um, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, I'm wondering, and you guys are frozen. Can you hear me? Yep. You're frozen, but we hear you. Well, Stephanie, while Steph is coming back, she'll come back in a minute. Hillary, I wanted to go to you in the meantime about the inspiration, you know, role models. You know, you are that generation. Who was your female role model in, in hockey? Because, you know, finding that courage, bravery to play in a very male sport, that is clear. You know, what was that confidence moment for you to put yourself you know, on the ice and, and who was your inspiration? Yeah. So I actually got introduced to hockey in sort of a non-traditional way. We just moved to a hockey market. So I'm from a ski family um, <laughs> and my mom just like threw us on the ice and we're like, go meet kids. Um, so I grew up sort of idolizing the NHL stars, right. Until I finally saw a woman play ice hockey and that was at the 98 Olympic Games. So Cami Granado, especially having that Chicago connection and um, the way she just, she's such a dynamic player and her off ice presence as, along with her on ice presence. Um, I idolized her and, and, uh, you know, Jane is another one, you know, if I'm sure I would have idolized if I were introduced to her at a younger age, it was just, the visibility was never there. Sorry. I've got my dog in the background, but visibility was never there. So, um, it's important, as you said, if she can see it, she can be it and to have that actual representation and to make that connection. And we've really been starved as that as, as women. Um, so hopefully that's changing soon. Well, you are going to lead the change. That is for sure. You know, the collective power of all of you is going to take, you know, hockey from where you are to where we can go. The sky's the limits, you know, that is really for sure. Um, and so skating at a young age, going into these clubs where, you know, they were all, you know, guys, how did you find that confidence to, to do it? I'm sure there were many times that you kind of said, why am I, why am I doing this? You probably were the only girl in the locker room. Yeah, many times. And a lot the of the locker time rooms are so smelly with ice hockey <laughs> clothes. Trust me, I'm a, I'm a hockey mom. I know. Yeah, they're, they're gross. <laughs> um, but a lot of the times I was getting dressed in the lobby or the, yeah. the girls or women's bathroom in the lobby, uh, which is, which is crazy to think about now. But, um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough um, to just have a mom who was like, if you want to play hockey, go play hockey. And gender wasn't necessarily a part of the equation until I got a little bit older. But um, I just want to be respected as, as uh, one of the best hockey players on the ice. And I didn't know how to lift the puck. I didn't know how to do any of these things. So it's probably one of the worst on the ice, but I just wanted to be a part of the crew, a part of the family uh, for ice hockey. And I think that's, what's so important is uh, making it more accessible. Um, so yeah. now that we have these increased opportunities for girls to play, um, you know, whether that's on all girls teams or co-ed teams, but making it more accessible. So people feel comfortable playing the sport that they love. Oh, that's fantastic. And I don't know what question Steph was starting to say, but I, I would love to talk about, you know, using your voices for change, using your platforms for change. What are some of the um, key action steps that are immediate gratification? You know, we talked about, you know, men now starting to wear female jerseys. A, we need to make the female, you know, icons and legends in male sizes, you know, so we need more of those so that we can buy them and men can buy them. But what are some immediate action steps that we can take to really, you know, create more equity in, in hockey? Well, I think, uh, and, and my son just chimed in, he said he has a Hillary Knight jersey. 
So that's pretty cool. I have, I have great family support here today. That's really fun. Um, I think, you know, there's a number of things we can do depending on what, what field we're in. Uh, first of all, we need to give women a chance. Uh, if we give women a chance and, and put them in positions um, at all different levels, we're, we're going to see the impact uh, they can make. As you said, uh, Shelley, uh, women work very collaboratively. They bring a fresh perspective. They often are incredible creative problem solvers. So it's, it's first in giving a chance. And I think uh, for companies and brands, it's to, it's to show them, it's to highlight them, it's to make them the heroes of the campaigns. You know, Jaina talked about, um, you know, in movies, but as brands, we can do a lot. And, and that was our mission at Bauer was to, we really took a look at and started uh, with Hillary actually and, and um, Marie-Philippe Poulain, who's another world-class athlete in putting them on the same uh, level with their male counterparts in our core campaigns, but then shifted even further to create our all first female campaign, which Hillary was a star in. And really that was inspired by, you know, what I heard a lot of and what we still hear today is that these women want to be appreciated and recognized first as the world class athletes that they are. And so we created uh, a campaign that showed Hillary an MP and literally the beasts that they are in terms of powerhouses and, and, you know, their training and they're on ice. And, and I think it was a, a real eye opener and we've continued with, with campaigns to show, uh, you know, turn stereotypes upside down about what it is to be a female athlete. And just, I wanted to share some t- statistics because it's one thing to do it for, for the right reason, but for brands, um, I think we need to acknowledge that, the time is here to be more inclusive and, and millennials and Gen Z care about this a lot. They care about representation. And, you know, it's interesting, this latest one that we just launched, um, here's some stats. It's our fourth best performing video ever. Um, it's behind jewelry, which was another uh, all female campaign. Two of the top four pieces of content that we've created have been women's movement videos. Um, and the one that we just launched uh, is the second highest shared video. And just as a brand, what that really means is, yeah, 75% of the people that viewed that video were new to Bauer. So we're really transcending our community and opening ourselves up to n- new audiences. And we talk about a lot about what we're doing as the right thing to do, but there's an economic equation. And you know, in my estimation, companies to, and brands need to get behind these women or get left behind. Amen to that, you know, and I think that, you know, one of the things, and if you um, put the link to the videos, you know, let's put it out there and and push it and we are going to amplify as well because, you know, it's, it's back to, we, we need to, to see it and it's the chicken and the egg, you know, the more we are aware of, you know, these incredible athletes, uh, the more we all start wanting to, watch and and pushing the messages and the need. Jaina, what's your um, best low-hanging fruit action steps that we can take? Well, I think, you know, to jump on what Mary Kay just said, it's, it's, it keeps coming back to visibility. Um, you know, you see the game at MSG, you see it on a national broadcast. That's the way the women's game needs to be seen. Um, you know, when I played, and I'm sure Hillary's the same, we're still at a growing phase where, Every time you step on the ice, there's people that have never seen women play hockey before. So every time you step on the ice, you're proving yourself, you're proving your sport, you're proving women. Um, You know, it's it's so important. So when we have those opportunities to showcase the game on the biggest stage, that's when it's so important. Uh, We look at moments like Kendall Coyne at the NHL All-Star Weekend and her skating. I mean, none of us were surprised how fast she is. We know how fast she is. But until it's done on that stage, with that support for everyone to see who hasn't seen women's hockey before, you know, somehow people were shocked that she was fast, but you know, we knew that we knew it all along, but people need to see it in the right light on the right platform. And so I I just keep coming back to the visibility piece. And that's, what's been so important about what I think we've done as the PWHPA in terms of working with NHL clubs and ensuring that, We work with clubs that share our vision of what professional women's hockey looks like uh, because they help put it on the scale that it should be on. And at the end of the day, we don't lose sight of the fact that when there's a women's truly women's professional league, 
that's, that's what's going to make our, our sports healthy from the professional level all the way down to grassroots, right? The second there's a truly women's professional league, parents across the world are going to start signing their girls up for hockey. And we know that. And uh, that's one of the reasons we're pushing so hard is, is about these players like Hillary and providing them what they deserve. But it's also about the long-term view of our sport and making sure more and more girls get involved and want to be a part of it. Steph, welcome back. Um, you just you just missed one moment where we talked about low hanging fruit of how we can truly activate change um, from visibility, representation, um, and creating a more equitable world in hockey. Yep, and uh, you know I'll jump in, and I'm, I'm sure you wanted to go to Hillary as well in terms of the the low hanging fruit. So actually, I'll let you go first, Hillary, and then I'll. I was watching, so anyway, I, I didn't miss anything, and and I'll I'll capture the 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 two things I was going to say before. But you go ahead, Hillary. No, I just to echo what Jaina and Mary Kay have already touched upon. It it's just engagement, right, and continuing to support and follow. Um, it's it's not by accident. Um, you know, formerly that you get introduced to the sport, you sort of had to seek it out and then watch it through a doorbell camera. So now we're finally getting presented with these opportunities, but now it's engaging with opportunities as well. And, and uh, you know, I think we're finding that women want to spend their dollar wisely, right? And to have that brand engagement and the right partners and the right sponsorships involved to make sure that we are um, giving the sport the, uh, the platform it needs, but then also the return on investment that people sign up for. You know, Steph, before you jump in, I just want to ask, what percentage of women watch um, hockey? Oh, my goodness. Do you know? You mean as part of the NHL audience or, yeah. or just in general? NHL audience. If, if I remember correctly, I think I saw a stat about this not too long ago that it was about 30 to yeah, 40%. Yeah, I think it's 30 to 40%. Um, and then in some of our recent broadcasts, I believe we've been told that that engagement is up to about 65%. So proving the point that there's, a, a, there's an untapped market here uh, for yeah. the NHL and you know, hockey fans are hockey fans. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to hear that and the proof is in the pudding. And so what I was starting to ask was about, you know, the fact that I had heard of the Messiah, right? You know, when, when I was growing up and, and how do we create, you know, female stars? In, in the sport. And then as I was watching, you started talking about some of the ways that you were doing that through Bauer. I think um, Secret, absolutely, through through sponsoring the Dream Gap Tour, which Dream Gap, that name was chosen intentionally, right, to, to identify the gap. Um, and it's when brands and media and fans and players really come together, right, to amplify the message. That, that's how we're going to get everyone out there. Um, that's the exposure, you know, the, it starts with awareness. Um, so I think that, you know, it, it seems like you're absolutely on the right track with all of this. Um, the stats you just talked about in terms of increasing engagement, um, you know, uh, and, and how incredible these athletes are. I mean, they really, really are. And when you watch it, like, there's no reason why, you know, some of the, the plays, you know, shouldn't be featured in the top 10 plays of the week on, on various yeah. sports networks, you know, what have you, like, it's all men's highlights. I never understand that, you know, and, it, we, it, and we need that professional league to get that. And we need yep. the exposure like Jana was talking about and Hillary was talking about. I mean, we did a mic'd up piece of content, um, you know, really raw and behind the scenes. Hillary was a big part, part of that. And Again, the engagement is, is off the chart. So there is a real appetite. There's a real readiness. And I referenced that Madison Square Garden that night that, um, you know, it just dawned on me at the end of the game, standing on the ice with Billie Jean King and the players that we, we were at uh, a tipping point. It was a watershed moment. Um, there's really no turning back and because of the momentum we have, because we really demonstrated to the world that if... Um, you know, they get the right visibility if they're playing in these venues that the product is there and people want to see it. Um, and so now it's just to your point, what can we do? What is the move forward? We have to keep the momentum, engage leaders across our sport uh, to speak up and step up and support, uh, you know, the women's game. But how do we close that gap? Like, I think it's a flipping point. 
I don't think it's a tipping point. I think it's a flipping point because it's it's about intentionality. And so I just want to say Thayer says 2022 Olympics USA yeah. for the gold again. Um, yeah. So what is what do we have to do to get the professional league? Like we are in this moment where we have the engagement now. We are sharing the stories. We are showcasing the tremendous athleticism of women in, in hockey. What do we need to do so that we can close this gap in hockey now? What are we waiting for? We don't need 20 years from now. What do we do? Well, I can start and the other two can chime in, but I, I think one thing we need to do is, uh, and I referenced this the other day, but when my brother went to New York, he said, you know, people don't talk about the Stanley Cup because it's like, what if we don't win it? And his first thing was like, we're going to start talking about the Stanley Cup because that's how we put our minds to it and how we build a plan. We stay, put a stake in the ground and say we're going there. And I really think we have to say coming out of the Olympics in 22, um, when we have the biggest inflection point for growth and participation, that, you know, in an ideal scenario, the next day after, after the gold medal is, is awarded, the next day we're talking about the a launch of a professional women's league for the 22-23 season. So saying this is our goal and this is our target and that's where we're headed and then the obvious things we need, um, at least in my view, we need NHL partnerships. They provide the infrastructure, the resources. There's streamlining of operational expenses. Um, and they have the community connections. And then we need corporations, like I said, to stand up and recognize the value, not, not just to do it for the right thing, but to recognize the value that they get in associating their brand with this product, the, the best women athletes in the world. And the best role models, by the way, as future leaders. So for every brand tuning in, if you want the best talent in the workplace and the best leadership skills, you see it right here. So pay attention. Yeah, the only thing I would add to that, in addition to the NHL clubs, the brands, is the media partners. Um, that's going to be a key piece to this as well. Um, but, you know, in the last little bit, we've had a lot of really, really positive conversations about people that want to be at the table. And I think to Mary Kay's point, um, we've been pretty clear on what our goal is here. And <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're going full steam ahead. So, um, you know, hopefully we have people at the table that, that see it the way we do. And, and we believe those people are there and they're ready to help elevate the women's game. What do you think, Hillary? I mean, if I had a handheld mic, I would just drop it because I think you guys covered it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a non-negotiable, right? It needs to happen and it's going to happen and putting a stake in the ground and uh, working towards it is, is something that we've done. So we're looking forward for the future. There's uh, Katrina has a comment and it's such an important one. First of all, Mary Kay, thank you for Bauer for the ongoing support. Um, brands considering why an investment in women's hockey is good for their business. I believe it is. Um, and then Jamie says that what's the role of men in the NHL? How can they really help to amplify and activate for change and to make sure your headline is a reality, not just a headline? We, we must make this happen right after the Olympics. Well, I think we know that women empower women, and that's really important. But I think what we also know is we need broad spanning support. We need support from the entire hockey community. Um, we need leaders to step up, but we need women. We need men. And the, the latest uh, video that we put out was exactly that. It's, it's a collection of men and women that are leaders in all different professions in our industry, speaking up and stepping up in, in a real visible way to support women's hockey. And so I think, you know, all the things that we've talked about, what can brands do? Um, what can organizations do? Uh, NHL athletes, no different. I mean, the women talked about it when we did our, our shoot and they did it together. Hillary, you can talk about this, but just how important it is to be shoulder to shoulder. And I think the men in the NHL are, are very passionate and very supportive of the women's game and really recognize the, them as, as world-class athletes. And, I think Jeannie, or sorry, Hillary, you could probably share a little bit of, of, of what that means that would be powerful coming from a player's perspective. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's whenever you can share the same stage. Uh, it, I think having their voice and their allyship provides credibility to what you do. And a lot of times when we get on that stage and we get an opportunity, it feels like our, our gender's on the line. But every time we have that, that brotherly voice or our male counterpart voice uh, supporting us, it, it helps us um, combat a lot of uh, misrepresentations in the space, right? So I think uh, we can sort of cut the learning curve and, and every time we have a male ally to be able to speak on our behalf or educate another um, guy in the space, it's it's pivotal for us. But um, as you've seen, and Jana can probably touch on this, but the, the stick in the ground campaign has, has been tremendous for our organization and for young girls who are looking up to, to the NHL stars, right? And also other opportunities such as the NHL all-star skills competition and having women involved. Um, so it's really, it sounds silly, but it's providing credibility in the space even though we know we're these amazing, talented, elite, skilled athletes and phenomenal women. But whenever you can have more support um, that looks different and is different, it, it definitely helps. I, I would say just to add to that, um, you know, Hillary is referencing the stick in the ground campaign we did, which was really a, a play on, you know, MK's point about a stake in the ground. So we're putting a stick in the ground for the future of women's professional hockey. And one of the most rewarding things I've seen out of it, in addition to the support we've got from NHL players and celebrities and different people, is that we had a video come out from the GTHL, which is the Greater Toronto Hockey League. We had all these young boys, 10, 11, 12 year old boys saying, I put a stick in the ground for the future of professional women's hockey. So that's changing the game, right? That's changing the future. That's creating men that are going to hopefully live in a gender equal world and appreciate women for what they do. And to me, that was, that was what this was about. Um, you know, we need, we need the allyship in the NHL, but this next generation, and we've mentioned this a few times is different. They have different expectations of us and they expect representation and inclusivity in everything we do. And, uh, and that's important. Uh, they have equality in their DNA. I love that, Steph, maybe we have a new challenge for ourselves of put the stick in the ground. And if we mm. had brands, you know, put a stick in the ground, you know, when you put yourself in that experience, it becomes, you know, your responsibility, not someone else's. So maybe we should regroup on this. Steph and I really um, come together on every, everything we do. There's no better partner than you, Steph, in helping to activate. This is ready to go. You have all the ingredients for success. We need to get the brands. And Jihan, thank you for your, your message about what does it take in the feasibility to get commitment, stick in the ground with intentionality um, and even pairing and sharing corporate leaders with athletes that are our you know, future leaders to, to come together. So. And investors. I saw a comment pop up, um, but I didn't get a chance to click on it. Now I can't find it. But what is the role of investors, um, which I think is something really important to think about as well? Well, I, yeah, I absolutely. I mean, the, the thinking of, of uh, you know, how do we create the best type of ownership group? I think we have to be really open and, and think creatively, you know, like, well, I, I mentioned the NHL clubs because I think they play a great role, but if there are celebrities or other investors that, that are passionate about women's sports and want to play a part, I think there's definitely a role. There's, you know, there's, there's ways to bring these groups together to be able to make it that much more powerful and impactful. Um, and, and going to another point that you made, Shelly, is just, I mean, we've experienced this at, as a brand at Bauer is, you know, Hillary and Jaina and all the other women are really incredible role models and, and ambassadors. And I've just never worked with anyone that works harder to deliver to the partnership and, and really add value. And I think that's something that brands really need to consider because when you sign elite athletes, that isn't always what you get. And it's more important to you know, have an athlete that can bring, um, you know, vision, leadership, personality and everything off the ice or off the playing field as well, uh, especially when they're representing your brand. And I can say that our, our experience has been off the charts uh, with the women in this regard. Jana, were you going to jump in? Oh, you're on mute. You're on Apologies, there's some noise in my house. Um, I was just going to jump on to, uh, you know, what Mary Kay said about, you know, there is a role, I think, for investors. We're trying to 
understand what the model is that we're going to move forward with. There's a lot of moving pieces, but that infrastructure, NHL infrastructure is key to us, but there are people out there that, that want to make this happen. And I think, you know, I see there's, there being a role there for those people. Well, it's, it's clear that we have next steps to take, but they are all positive and, you know, play like a girl. It is playing like a true uh, leader and, and role model. That is absolutely for sure. We don't know that the puck's going to go in every single time, but the more pucks we put out there, uh, the more opportunities we have. And so we absolutely must do that. And I know that Steph and I, and I don't want to speak for Steph, she's, she's going to close. Um, we know what we need to be doing to help and to activate using our voice, our, you know, um, connections. This is to me a, a no brainer of what, what our next steps are and what we need to do, which is, you know, bring more awareness, more uh, investors to the table so that, you know, we can really deliver on creating a professional league for women. Steph, to you. Yeah, absolutely. And Hillary popped at the puck analogy. <laughs> I, I, I saw her like light up at, at, at the, I've never heard Shelly use a puck analogy before. She did it perfectly. Um, and, and I just want to bring out a, a few different points that, that everybody said. And again, first, just express my gratitude for not only being a part of this panel, but for leading in the way that you are and leading for not only current generations, but future generations and for not being afraid and for taking those steps and for you know having the courage to do that. Um, I, th I think just again, to, to reframe some of the comments that were made, um, one of them was proving yourself every time you step on the ice, right? I think that that's really applicable to a broader audience too, because we all have to prove ourselves every single day, whether we're stepping into the boardroom, we're stepping in, you know, onto the ice, we're, we're doing whatever it is. You have to earn respect every single day. And I think that's just a really important mindset for us all to have. Um, the putting our minds to it and saying it out loud, like that's so important. Here are my goals and I'm going to, and here's how I'm going to get there and I'm going to get there and you're not going to stop until you do. And hopefully we are all going to be there to help you get there. Um, I think too, the, you know, actually something Hillary, you said in the beginning, when you took that initial step, um, it, it was having the confidence um, the self-awareness and the ownership, right? The ownership of taking that moment and knowing that it was on your shoulders, right? And, and, and feeling that and knowing you and your teammates could make a collective impact. Um, that's, it, I just, it gives me goosebumps every time I think about, you know, what that moment must have been like, the decision leading up to it. And I know it's hard to put to words, but, and then look where you are now. Um, you know, and the fact that growth can be painful, right? You said it's a growing, it's an opportunity for growth. And it is as individuals, as human beings, as a society, you know, and of course, as leagues and, and, and in sports, like it, it's an opportunity for all of us to grow and, and it can be painful. And I think the last point is really, but it's worth it, right? Um, and that we all need to come together because true change takes all of us and it takes the leadership and it takes all of us coming together to help amplify that message. So I, I just, again, I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you for everything that you're doing and to Shelly for you, of course, for providing the platform, everything you do to drive change and equality. Um, it's just, you know, unparalleled. So thank you so much for this opportunity and good luck. And we're gonna be following up to see how we can help support. Steph, I want to do one shout out, which is to Mary Kay's kids. I have to say, yeah, you're so all cute. So incredible <laughs> supporting. And I think that it takes a village, you know, not only from the players, from the, the women in the business of sport, but from our families, from, yeah. you know, brands, from media, just to bring it all home. It's the power of the pack. And we always say when purpose meets passion, we're unstoppable. We are unstoppable together. And so let's go and let's deliver on, you know, our wishes, our hopes, and our dreams because our dream will come true. So here's to each and every one of you. We are so grateful. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Thank you for having <laughs> us. Amazing. <laughs> I send you the videos.
please. We'll, we'll amplify. <laughs>